Hey YouTube, it's Tyler the Antenna Man here to give you guys an update on ATSC 3.0. Specifically that the FCC will be voting in about a month on some proposed rule changes that will enable broadcast internet. In this video, I'm going to get into details about broadcast internet, my opinions on it, and some predictions I may have for the future. ATSC 3.0 is a new television standard that's set to replace the current ATSC 1.0 system over the next few years. Features include more channels, 4K video, mobile viewing, and in this case, 25 megabit per second internet. You can find some videos that provide more in-depth details on ATSC 3.0 on my YouTube channel. According to a multi-channel news article, FCC Commissioner Brennan Carr is planning an FCC vote to change some broadcast TV regulations. The proposed rule change is essentially saying that some of these regulations should not apply to a broadcast TV station if they are using some of their spectrum for data services, such as video on demand or internet. I'm going to be honest with you guys, when I first saw this news article, I was extremely disappointed, mainly due to the fact that history repeats itself. If numerous TV stations across the country were willing to sell their TV spectrum to cell phone companies in the FCC incentive auction and the FCC repack, they will be more than willing to sell a decent chunk of their spectrum to internet companies. However, Brennan Carr made the mention specifically of low band spectrum, likely VHF TV stations and low VHF TV stations. TV stations that cover a pretty large area, but require a larger outdoor antenna for best reception. Many people have problems with low VHF, and if low VHF could sort of be repurposed for internet, of course, they'd have to keep their main broadcast signal on the air. It would actually be beneficial to many people in rural areas that don't have access to high-speed internet. The proposition would not change the rule that requires broadcast TV stations to keep their main dot one channel free and open to the public. In fact, this has been the rule for nearly two decades now. Broadcast TV stations technically could encrypt the subchannels if they wanted to, but nothing ever became of it. There was one company that tried a paid over the air TV approach years ago, and it never really took off. Instead, broadcasters embraced over-the-air TV and put sub-channels within their spectrum to generate some ad revenue. I have two predictions on what the future of over-the-air TV may look like if this proposition passes. The first situation would be ideal, where a VHF TV station in a given market leases out some of their spectrum for an internet service. Usually the VHF TV stations are hard to pick up, especially low VHF. So I'm talking 6ABC in Philadelphia, WQED in Pittsburgh, the Boston PBS, those stations are very hard to pick up with the average antenna setup. You usually need a large outdoor antenna to pick them up. And that would help a lot of people in rural areas that already have large antennas. They would be able to get internet service from that specific broadcast TV station. Of course, the TV station would have to keep their main dot one signal free and open. But what they might also do is a TV station might lease some spectrum from another TV station that's easier to pick up. So for example, hypothetical situation, 6ABC, which broadcasts on a low VHF band and is very hard to pick up with the average antenna setup without consulting with a professional such as me, Antenna Man. I do offer custom antenna recommendations on my website if you have trouble picking up low band VHF TV stations. It would be great in the future if 6ABC were to lease most of their spectrum out to an internet company and then also simulcast their main channel on easier to get TV stations such as NBC10 or CBS3. That would be a win-win for everyone. People in rural areas that are more set up to pick up low VHF TV stations would get internet in addition to the main TV signal. And then, you know, if the TV station wanted to, they could potentially hop on another frequency owned by another TV station so over-the-air viewers could easily get their signal. Again, this is just a hypothetical situation to give you an idea on what can happen. It's unlikely it's going to happen, but there is a possibility that this situation may happen. 
The second prediction I have is pretty unlikely but still a possibility, and it's not a good prediction. If the demand for broadcast internet became so high, TV stations would need more spectrum to divert to these internet services, which would mean they would have to take away from some of the spectrum that they use to host their main channel and the subchannels, which could result in the subchannels disappearing and becoming potentially a paid model. I can slightly see it now. A broadcast TV station saying, hey, you want me TV, antenna TV, or grit? Sign up for $5 a month and you can access them using our broadcast internet service. Save by bundling TV and internet for only $29.99 a month. Hopefully this situation does not happen, but if it does happen, you may see something like this in the future on my YouTube channel. Hey YouTube, it's Tyler the Antenna Man. As many of you know, the price of internet services has gone up so much to the point that the internet company is just ripping the shirt off my own back and the only shirt I'm left with now is this t-shirt that was given to me by a local radio station. Props to Wowie 97.1. Good times, great oldies. No, you're not, you're not getting this shirt too. This is my last shirt. Over the next few days, Comcast, the owner of NBC, will be launching their Xfinity internet service on many NBC stations across the United States. If you watch any subchannels on some of these stations, the chances are the subchannels will disappear, and you will have to sign up for a subscription in order to continue watching them. You can save with this exclusive offer from Xfinity. Get 25 megabit per second internet with subchannels included for only $49.99 a month, plus taxes. Ask how to upgrade to HD for only $5 more. Xfinity, simple, easy, awesome. I had my data cap already. I only made about a two minute video. You want more from me? Okay, here's 20 bucks, here, take it. That's not enough? You kidding me? No, no, don't take my shirt. Don't take my next shirt, no, no. Now I want to make it very clear, I'm not saying that either of these situations is going to happen. I am just saying that there is a chance that one of them may happen. It's possible that if broadcast TV stations are able to lease out some of their spectrum for internet services, it can be great providing competition in areas that need it the most. It could also be very bad if they lease out too much of that spectrum to companies like Cox, Comcast, and Verizon that may already own the market, essentially proposing that it would give competition to areas that don't have it, but in the end, the companies that already have a monopoly in a specific market just lease the TV station spectrum in the given market, so essentially you have the choice to get Verizon over Fios or Verizon over the air. At the end of the day, it's still one company. I'm pretty neutral on this whole thing. I don't have a favoritism either way. Part of me says this can be really great for everyone, but then part of me says this can really screw things up. If you have a certain take on this subject, feel free to email or write one of the FCC commissioners and give your input. Hopefully this video does not scare you too much. The fact of the matter stands that broadcast TV stations in the United States really are embracing free over-the-air TV by providing a variety of sub-channels for viewers that normally would not get them with an analog signal. This brings in a decent amount of revenue to the TV station through advertisements, and I don't see them having that taken away. Unless, of course, an internet company is giving them more money compared to a broadcast sub-channel. Only time will tell what will happen. There is a potential to fit a lot more TV channels and other stuff, hence broadcast internet, into an ATSC 3.0 signal due to HEVC, which allows a video to keep the same picture quality while taking up less than half the space. In plain English, there is a lot more room to fit both TV content and other content into a broadcast TV signal with ATSC 3.0. I'm thinking that there will be enough room to continue to broadcast both the current TV channels, including subchannels, and then maybe an internet service on one or two channels. But if the internet service gets too big, they might say, okay, you gotta go, me TV, you gotta go, grit TV, you gotta go. Antenna TV, you gotta go to the point, all you're left with is the main dot one channel and a bunch of over the air internet services. Thanks for watching this YouTube video. Don't be too scared, people. I think we are okay. 
If you're on Facebook, like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA. If you are not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates on when I post new videos, make sure to sign up to my email list. I attach a link in the description of this video. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.